Welcome to ZCast, everyone. I'm Zegas Caravalli from ZK Reacher. I'm back at the Cisco stand at Black Hat 2025 in Las Vegas. I'm here with uh, Philippe Lonoret from uh, Cisco and the Talus Group. Yeah. Uh, Philippe, uh, just a quick introduction on yourself and what you do within Talus. Hey, yeah. Hi. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, so I'm a senior vulnerability researcher, and so my job is to look for uh, vulnerabilities in third-party softwares. It's kind of like self-initiated research that well, I do, and uh, our findings, we report them to vendors, um, and when things get fixed, we publish our research uh, yeah. on, the, on the Talos blog. And so you're the one finding all those vulnerabilities that we see reported? Yeah, like yeah. The, oh yeah, the, for, for today, yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, so I, uh, I saw you just issued a, a report, mm -hmm. and the title was uh, Revolt, when your sock turns against you, it reported five vulnerabilities to Broadcom and Dell affecting the Control Ball 3 firmware yeah. and Windows APIs. Yeah. So can you talk about what those were, how yeah. serious they were, what kind of vulnerabilities? For sure, yeah. So the, the Control Vault is like that little thing. I uh, can show you. Uh, yeah. And the idea here is it connect, it's when you have a Dell laptop, uh, latitude or precision mostly, so the business laptops, uh, this board might be included in it if you it, if you have a fingerprint reader, a smart card reader, or an FC card reader. So it's not an older laptops, but if you have this security feature. So it's picture, a pretty common component then. I think so, yeah. 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 My estimate is that there's like only like, ten, like in the tens of millions of devices that, that have that. And the idea is it centralizes like those like uh, peripherals and it connect that one connects to the motherboard and uh, over USB. Uh, and from like any user, you can send comments to the board. It's not documented, you're not supposed to be doing it, but you, you can. And my findings were you can send kind of like malicious comments that will cause like memory corruption inside the, the firmware of that board. You get code execution from there, you can leak secrets. So the, the chip has some key, key material like burn in the fuse. It's a per device, uh, it's a per device uh, keys. And having those keys, I can tamper with the firmware on the chip and make a permanent modification of it. Oh, wow. And from there, uh, with a malicious board, you can uh, send bad data to Windows, which will trigger like another vulnerability, which can be exploited to get uh, system privileges, so like the highest level of privilege on Windows. Or I've also done like cute demo where, because it talks with the fingerprint reader, and Windows talk with that board before talking with the fingerprint reader. You can change the firmware to make it say like every time someone touch the fingerprint, it's like yeah, yeah, that's the right user. Like log, in, log that person in, and that bypass that can bypass the uh, the login screen on Windows if it was set up for fingerprint readings. Okay, and so ultimately, uh, that could really compromise the security of that device. Yeah, which then would compromise the security of all the applications on the device as well. It can be, yeah. so the one, uh, maybe gotcha, is you either need, you know, like a, a malicious user or the user needs to be compromised already to perform those attacks, or someone with physical access needs to open the laptop and connect to the board directly. Okay. But assuming you can do that, then you know, because you can get system privileges, it would compromise the whole system uh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I know that Windows APIs were also compromised, right? Yeah. So that, that's why I was talking about like the, uh, the, the it's the Windows APIs of the the control vault. Oh, the, so okay. it comes it comes with like its own APIs and that's it. Yeah, yeah. And so if you have such a device, how do you remediate against it? Sorry. And if you have such a device, what's the remediation plan? For okay, that? yeah. So I think there's a, a few things you can do. One is like obviously like update your device. So uh, Windows update will actually automatically push updates for the the firmware on that board. So all the vulnerabilities we've disclosed, they, uh, they've been patched, and the patch is automatically uh, deployed, you know, unless you disable your updates and so on. But, so that's one. And then if you're like worried, you know, there might be more vulnerabilities that you know, have, haven't been found yet. I think there's some mitigation you could do, like for instance, the, the fingerprint attack I was talking about, it makes sense if someone has physical access to your machine. So if you're going to be in a situation where you leave your laptop adapter like in a hotel room, for instance, you could disable the device, you know, if you don't need the fingerprint login, you could disable it temporarily uh, to prevent that type of attack. And, um, and yeah, otherwise, you know, be aware that, you know, 
having this device can come with risk and you should monitor yeah. you know malicious behaviors uh, for instance uh, anything that would load the apis of that board that should not be loading them could be flagged or if uh, the windows biometric service crashes or other like the broadcom services crashes you know you might you know find that in the logs and that might be like a potential sign of exploitation but as far as I can tell, we haven't seen any like in the world exploitation okay. of that. And how common is this type of uh, uh, vulnerability? Uh, as in like firmware vulnerabilities yeah. or the Well, I mean ones? like everybody's got a laptop today. Mm -hmm. Everybody's running. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So uh, that is like specific to uh, Dell laptops. Yeah. So you will not find it in any other brands. But the the, the more question of like um, firmware security, I think you have. Sure, you're in your laptop you have Windows, but or Linux or whatever. But then you have other devices that have they have their own firmware. You know, if you have a fingerprint reader, like it runs its own firmware and so yeah. on. So there are a lot of things that we don't necessarily think about when we're thinking about like the computer security, uh, and we may not know about it because usually those like firmware blobs are maybe encrypted or and undocumented. So it's an attack surface that you know. People have looked at it, but it's not the most explored, and I think it's good to be aware of you know, some of those risks. Um, and you know, maybe do reverse engineering like I do to yeah. understand better the, uh, the threat of a specific device. Right. So you released a blog on this as well, right? Yeah. yeah so, so talk about what, what's up the content. So we actually like released one blog like two days ago. That's like an overview of the, the attack with some demos and, and whatnot. And uh, on Saturday, we will release uh, the technical details. It's like quite like a 30 page blog that oh. goes really like in depth on like. That's a not, it's not a blog anymore, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a deep dive. Yeah, that's yeah. Probably. Yeah, and that's coming this Saturday. Yes. Okay. And uh, when I publish it, I'll make sure I include a link to it on awesome, the YouTube yeah. description below. All right. Yeah. Now, as I said, we are here at Black Hat. Um, what are you hoping to get out of the event this year? What are you looking forward to? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think uh, I'm here mostly like to share that work, okay. and you know, like I have a great time like sharing sharing that research and meeting with like other like security researchers and talking about you know this type of pro projects. Like for instance, yesterday I had like a beautiful conversation with another researcher who was presenting today uh, about Windows Hello, which is like the and some of the biometric things. And so it's, like, it's it's uh, really lovely to have this like happenstance of meeting researchers that are doing things that adjacent to what yeah. you do. So yeah, yeah. I think this type of uh, situation was I look for. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny because the, the Talos Group at Cisco does do a lot of research. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it, I have invited kind of flies under the radar at Cisco. You know, all the products, everybody mm -hmm. likes shiny new products. But the research that you do actually fuels a lot of the product development as well, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. The, uh, that's kind of like the... Uh, one of the, the value of the team I have, is, yeah. the, the I work for, is to um, the, our findings are going to be used to create uh, detection rules for you know those emerging threats. Yeah. So yeah. sometimes like start rules uh, specifically for that project, we're going to have some uh, secure endpoint, uh, yeah, secure connect endpoint uh, detection rule that will uh, catch you know if some malicious binaries or or some unexpected binaries are loading the APIs for that board. And can flag it, yeah. uh, so that's pretty nice to be able to, you know, help contribute to the improvement of our products. All right. Well, I appreciate that thing. Yeah. And so uh, keep watching, following Talos, because yeah. you never know when your device might be, be on there, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm Bafa Philippe from ZS Caraval from ZK Research, saying thanks for watching. Uh, yeah. Give us a like and hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time on the next episode of ZCast. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good one.